Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, your home for all content, Lord of the Ring home. Today, I'm going to do a long-term speculation video. Basically, we're going to go over what I think is going to come out in the game over the next year. And then every once in a while, maybe every month or so, we're going to check in and see how wrong I was. Or right, I might be getting a few of these right, I think. I've sort of characterized what I think the big content chunks, kind of what bins they can fit into, and you can see them on the screen there. Game modes, character releases, character progression, and then what if and factions. Specifically talking about the what if characters that they've mentioned quite a bit. And then I say factions because it's not specific characters that are going to be released, but maybe some possible factions that are going to be targeted down the line. And I just want to say, uh, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this content thing. So feel free to like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing and want to continue to support the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And then one more thing before we get started, I want to kind of go back to this interview that they released on launch day. This is from Nick Reinhardt, and specifically the second part here that I want to talk about. He doesn't mention in the first paragraph, they've got stuff over a three to five year period, but the second paragraph I think is important. He says, I would say we have a very strong character and event roadmap over the course of this next year, and we have a very strong feature roadmap. I would say that we even have the beginnings of like 30 to 50% view of what things can be done in year two as well. And basically, this is, I think, the important part here. A lot of how we think about these big ideas, big characters, big what if scenarios is as scaffolding. And then they work backwards from that. And I'm actually going to try and do essentially the same thing. Things I think that they have are going to put in place. And then what other components need to come out before that to make sure that that is a good feature or a good character um, stuff like that. So with that, let's first talk about game modes. This is also from the dev Q&A, also Nick Reinhardt. Are there any other new game modes coming out before the raids? Raids is the next big release. I think we, most people who are paying attention to the Discord know that raids are coming out fairly soon. They're supposed to be targeted for Q3. And this is going to be chapter one of what I believe to be four chapters of the Mines of Moria raid. But this wouldn't be a speculation video where we're testing how good I'm going to be if I didn't tell you an exact time that I think these are going to come out. I think this is early August. Let me scooch this over here. I think it's going to come out in August, uh, and I'm guessing it's going to be early August that we're going to get the Minds of Moria raid. And I'll do you one further here. There's four chapters, supposedly, these storybook raids. I think each of these chapters is not going to be necessarily like fights you would have seen in, or different yeah, fights you would see in maybe like uh, the Lord of the Rings movies, but instead different times that the Mines of Moria have been, you know, occupied or whatnot. So I think it's going to be more time-based in that way than different just, you know, single boss fights. Oh, we're, this chapter one, we're, we're just fighting... Uh, the goblins, or we're just fighting the Watcher, whatever. And then, you know, chapter four is the Balrog. I think it's actually going to be split up over time. Again, could be wrong there, but I, you know, we'll see. I also think importantly, Gandalf will be the raid reward. Uh, I think that's going to be uh, the raid reward. I I know I'll talk about it when we get to character releases, but I think Gimli and I think Legolas are going to have their own sort of events and things. In a lot of the dev interviews and a lot of the interviews they did for release day, they talked about having these big characters coming out basically in the next few months. People, Characters that would draw people in. And when I think about that, those characters haven't quite come to the game yet. People know who Lord Elrond is if they're big Lord of the Rings fans, but... You know, everybody knows who Gandalf is. Everybody knows who Legolas and Gimli are, right? So I think those are the characters that are going to be coming out. And I don't think Legolas or Gimli are going to be the raid reward just because I think there's some data mine stuff that basically shows they might have some events. Um, I think Gandalf is a more appropriate raid reward than Gimli or Legolas, and I think Gandalf could really tie together some sort of fellowship team, which would be really awesome. So I have that. Next, I think the big game modes that they're going to describe are going to be PvP-focused. And so in a 
earlier, much earlier Q, uh, dev Q and A, and I'm forgetting, maybe it's, I think his name was Tim, maybe. Um, they basically talked about having these essentially four pillars: social uh, and solo, and PVE and PVP, and then trying to get basically events for all of those. And in all of the interviews they released on launch day, they talk about this multi-squad PVP mode. And that doesn't give too much away because that could still be guild-based or it could be solo-based, right? I think this is, again, we're, we're putting my project predictions to the test. I think a lot of people will disagree with me here. I think a GAC-type mode is going to come before a guild war mode. I think that's what a lot of people are interested in. GAC, if you don't know, uh, Grand Arena Con, uh, just basically Grand Arena Championships from Swigo. It was massively, massively popular. I would say it basically rocketed the game back up to just a massive level of popularity. It gets the community involved because a lot of content creators and streamers can now do all their GACs. And it's basically a staple of the community at this point. I do think they've got to put their own spin on it because I think GAC can get a little bit old and I haven't played Swigo in a while and apparently there's things like Datacrons now, you know, things that maybe didn't go over so well. But I actually think that the GAC type mode is going to come before a guild PvP mode. Personally, that's where I'm at. I think uh, those are probably modes we can expect within this next year, GAC and a guild PvP mode. You know, there's always talk about whether there's going to be some sort of like large, something analogous to territory battles in in Swigo, where you have the guild participating in PvP, PvE content together. But I think they're actually probably going to focus more on the raids than any, you know, anything like this. So I think we'll probably see, you know, if I were to guess two chapters of the Mines of Moria... Gandalf will be the raid reward. GAC type mode before guild PvP mode, but eventually probably a guild PvP mode. All right. Let's talk about character releases. Let's get the easy ones out of the way first. It's been data mined, and I think um, it makes sense that we will probably get the Haradrim, right? Haradrim need two marquees to complete the squad. It's been data mined that uh, the Haradrim are going to be the unlock requirements for the Witch King, which it's been widely assumed, again, data mined so subject to change here, that the Witch King will be the next legendary unlock. That'll be the first legendary unlock for the Shadow side of things. You need the Haradrim to unlock him. Again, data mine, none of this has been confirmed, but I'm going to go with it here, and I'm going to say that they're going to release the two Haradrim marquees next. And one of the reasons is because we just had elves, 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 elves. And basically, people are straining for light side resources. So I think they got to do a little bit of shadow stuff next. And I and Haradrim makes sense. But if you're also going to be releasing the Mines of Moria, you got to do that. And with, with Fellowship characters, you got to do that maybe a little bit after you release some of these shadow characters. So... I think for July, we're going to see two Haradrim Marquis, possibly some other type of shadow character, and then the mines are going to be coming out, and with that, we're going to get some more raid-specific characters with the Fellowship. Um, and then eventually, that sort of switches back to the light, and then I think we're going to get a Ring Wraith... Oh, can't spell here. Ring Wraith Team. Okay, I think there's going to be the team that's associated with the Witch King that starts to come out, and then either the Witch King is going to come before or after all of the Nazgul get um, essentially released. And this kind of you know allows people to deplete all of their shadow crystals, deplete all of their light crystals, and kind of switch off without focusing too much on one particular crystal for the bottleneck purposes, if that makes sense. Okay. So in terms of character releases, I also want to talk a little bit about when marquee characters are going to be farmable um, for everybody else. And so ideally, Arwen and Elodin are going to need to be farmable before Elrond comes back again. 
And so I'm going to assume that also in July, so July, uh, let's put July here. I can't spell marquees either. I don't think it's like, maybe it is. I'm not sure. So this is July. And I think this is when Arwen and Elodin become farmable. Also July. Um, I don't have any particular insight into this, except that, I don't know, I guess it just makes sense logically to me. And I think before the, uh, you know, around the time that the raids get released probably a little bit after the raids get released, we're going to then see the return of Elrond. So I'm going to say late August sometime, we're going to see the return of Elrond. Elrond return late August. I think things just line up a little bit more for that. Again, I'm hoping we're going to get more info about Cadence and uh, when things become farmable in this next week here, actually, just more info in general. So... That's kind of all I have in terms of character releases. I think the last thing, well, that's not true. The last thing I want to add is that I think we will get our first big light side character early next year. So I'm going to say Q1 2024, big light side. And I'll do you one better. I think it's going to be Treebeard. I don't exactly know how they're going to work this in, um, but I just can't imagine any of the other light side characters being anything other than Treebeard. I had a whole video about um, what I think the first light side character, big light side characters, can be. Some possibilities, you know, you got eagles. Um, it'd be cool if they. That's how they incorporated mounting characters. So like, you know, you have a mounted King Theoden who can like supercharge the Rohan squad, that sort of thing. But I think it's going to be Treebeard. I think it just makes a lot of sense. Um, but I'm not exactly sure how they're going to fit that in there. So I'm kind of tossing him to quarter one of next year. All right. Let's talk character progression. I think late, basically at the same time, but later. So I would say late August to September. We're going to see G9. A lot of the gear requirements for, or the level requirements for gear eight are below level 60. So I make think it makes sense that we're gonna get gear nine sooner than a level increase, not to mention we have all that purple gear and other stuff in game right now. And so I think along with the Mines of Moria, which could possibly be giving you some more of this, you know, the stuff to progress from gear eight to gear nine, we're going to see this first. And then, I think even before we get a uh, level increase, let's say to 65, I think we're going to see a mod system. But I think it's going to be different than another mod system. Let's see if I have a screenshot for that. Uh, just talking about what ifs there. Okay. I don't think I screenshotted this particular thing. That's okay. I think I remember it. Basically, they said that they learned some things from doing mods for Swigo. So Swigo has these RNG-based mods, but now they also have relics on characters, which are basically just additional resources you're plugging into a particular character. It kind of recycled some of the old gear in the economy, right? But there's just flat stat increases in that case. So I think they want to strike a compromise between having customizability as opposed to just flat stat increases and um, limiting the amount of RNG because I think mods became very complicated, very fast, and very RNG-based. And I think that off-put a lot of uh, you know more casual gamers. The hardcore players, I think, really love mods. But I think it's not as as approachable to somebody who's just trying to casually get into the game. And they are trying to maybe capture more of those people. And so I think it's going to strike a balance. There's going to be some RNG elements, 
and some flat, basically, but also combine some flat stat increases. And so what I can see with that is maybe you have a mod-like system where there's an RNG in terms of stat increases, uh, but you kind of only have one stat increase. So this slot only increases speed or this slot only increases damage, focus, armor, whatever. And so you can slot different ones in there, but you kind of just have RNG over that one particular slot. So I have a good speed mod or I have a bad speed mod, but it's only got speed on there. Um, I think that's going to come before the level increase. I think uh, this gives people a chance to sort of get their characters up and running and then and start to widen out their squad um, so they can get a bunch of different characters up and coming. And I think that that's going to be important, especially for the GAC type mode. We're going to need to have multiple squads ready to go. So do you see how I'm kind of doing this? Start with the big events and then kind of work back there. So we're going to get the Moria raid, right? We've just released a team that I think is going to be very sustainable, especially for the raid. I think it's pretty common uh, advice, right? Or not advice, but speculation that the Rivendell team is going to be pretty good for raids just because of the amount of sustain that they have. And then we're going to be getting some nice, you know, G9 rewards from that, getting our characters up. We're going to be starting to build out a wider and wider roster, especially with the release of some shadow characters and the shadow legendary. And then we'll have a GAC type mode where we can then battle it out in that way. You know, person, person, person versus person, but with multiple squads. And then I think the mod system is going to help sort of deepen that and add a little bit of, you know, variability to exactly what's happening in there. All right. Then I do think by some time before the end of next year, we're going to get an increase in player level to level 65 but i think it's going to be pretty far off so i would guess that like a mod system is maybe coming quarter one quarter two uh, let me go back up here i think this is probably going to be coming sooner rather than later either quarter four or quarter quarter four of this year or quarter four or quarter one of next year i cannot stress enough that every single interview i saw that they released for launch day showed apparently this multi-squad PVP mode. And I'm choosing to interpret that as the GAC type mode as opposed to the guild type PVP mode. So I'm thinking this is coming sooner rather than later. I'm probably leaning more towards quarter one here of next year. All right, and last but not least, we have the what if in factions sort of content bid that I've grouped up here. And the reason I've included it in there is just because, to be honest with you, I really don't know how they're going to include what if characters in into some of the factions that I think are going to be released here soon, and some of the characters I think are going to be released here soon. I'll, I'll explain maybe possibly one theory with the, specifically with the first what if character I think they're going to release, but it's hard to imagine how a lot of these things work together. Um, so I'm excited to see that. I will mention that basically, you know, okay, right here. We have, I believe, two what-ifs planned within the next 12 months. So we're going to speculate on that. In fact, it may actually be three. I think we're going to speculate on that. And the rest of these screenshots I'm going to show you, he always mentions a couple of things. This is all Nick Reinhardt, the game director, when he's specifically talking about the what-if scenarios. You know, he says, what-if is in two flavors. What if Glorfindel and Aragorn met? That's one flavor. That's what happens in the books. For those of you who have only seen the movies, basically, Glorfindel is a revived insanely powerful elf like the one of the most powerful elf uh is it not the most powerful but like one of the most powerful elves he died in the first age fighting a balrog after the balrog pulled his hair and like sunk him to the bottom of an abyss pretty much exactly the same way that gandalf died right and then he gets sent back in the third age to sort of uh be a steward of the Middle Earth, I would say. And he is sent out by Lord Elrond to essentially go find the person who has the One Ring, which is Frodo and Aragorn. And importantly, this is the big difference between the movies and the books. In the movies, Arwen essentially helps Frodo and Aragorn escape the Nazgul, go across the river to get into Rivendell. In the books, it's Glorfindel. Um, so... The idea here is what if Glorfindel and Aragorn met? That's one flavor, but another flavor, and that's what actually happens, but another flavor is what if things change? Essentially, what if that's not what happened? 
And he mentions it again, uh, not quite that one, but we'll get to that in a second. He mentions it another time, I believe. Yeah, what if Glorfindel and Aragorn had met? Well, you know, these are the important questions to us. So I think the first what if character is going to be a ring wraith Frodo. Basically, um, Frodo gets, you know, captured, stabbed by the Nazgul, and um, he he gets hit with the Morgul blade, so he's got Morgul poison in him, and when you die from Morgul poison, essentially you turn into a wraith, uh, and, you know, that's, you become, you can become a servant of, of um, Sauron that way. And so I think this is an important part of it. What if Glorfindel had sort of not stepped in and helped Aragorn and the other people, you know, cross the river to get into Rivendell? So I think that is going to be the first what-if character we get. And I also think it makes sense because we're getting the Witch King as well. Or at least we believe we're getting the Witch King. So I think a Ring Wraith Frodo can then slot into that squad. Uh... What the unlock requirements for Ring Wraith Frodo are going to be, no idea. One thing I should mention, uh, where did I put it? Ring Wraith team, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't even put it in here. Witch King. I think this comes Q4, Q1. Quarter four this year, quarter one next year. Let me move this down a little bit. Sorry, now it's all kind of messed up, but yeah, so the Witch King, I think, is coming Q4, Q1. I'm not exactly sure, you know, whether they're going to release the Ring Wraith team before or after that. That's actually something I'm, I'm pretty questionable on. I think both of these are going to happen in Q4 and Q1, so I'm going to kind of lump them together. I know I'm hedging my bets here. And I think Ring Wraith Frodo is going to come Q1, Q1. I'll just leave it at that. I think he's going to kind of, okay, we've got all the hype from the from the Witch King, and now we've kind of got what I'm going to call for my Swiggo people here, a, a Malik-type situation with Darth Revan, where you get this additional character that really just turns the squad into something else. Um, so I think that's what's going to be the uh, probably the arena meta, if I'm being honest with you. But I think we're going to get Ring Wraith Frodo Q1. The other character that they always mention in these interviews, Nick Reinhardt specifically, is Dark... Queen Galadriel. God, I cannot spell. What if Galadriel had taken the One Ring? They kind of, I believe, show like flashbacks of this. Not flashbacks, but possibilities of this in the in the movies. Um, I think the idea being that, you know, okay, what if she had been um, essentially tempted by the One Ring, had given over to that temptation, and turned into the Dark Queen? I think that she'll be, she'll be pretty powerful in that way. But I think this is going to be much later on. I imagine there's going to be some more light squad stuff before we get a second really powerful dark, you know, shadow what if character. So I actually think this could be Q3 next year. And that's kind of the limit of where I'm putting things right now. So I think first, what if character we're going to get is Ring Wraith Frodo. And then we'll see something maybe like a Dark Queen Galadriel in Q3 here. And then we can look at also just sort of some other factions. Ooh, right before we do that. They also mentioned, you know, like what if Smeagol hadn't gotten the ring? Um, as much as I would love to have like normal, regular Joe Smeagol, I really would. I just don't think it's interesting enough to warrant a whole what if character. And it seems like they want to reserve these what if characters for impactful things. They don't, it's, it looks like they're all one ring focused at the moment, but I think later on they're going to try and move away from that. They mentioned that in some of the interviews. It's hard to get away from the ring, the one ring sort of questions, but I think they will eventually get a, move away from that. Maybe when they focus more on the Hobbit stuff, you know, talking about smog or, or talking about Balin retaking the Mines of Moria, some things they specifically mention. Okay, let's talk about factions. There's some factions I obviously think are going to come first because they've got. Elements already in the game. Gondor, Ranger, Dwarves. I think those are probably going to be big ones. 
And then you also have probably the Dunlanders. So we have a number of them, Edric and the Chief and, and, and one other, I believe. So these are sort of all, you know, they've got three characters in the squad and they need to be sort of filled out. And so I think we're going to be getting these characters sooner rather than later. I think the Rangers are an interesting one because we have gotten a bunch of Rangers, right? We've gotten Elodin, we've gotten Elra here. Um, but I think they're going to add somebody like Faramir. Um, and Faramir's already in the game. You go, you know, you play with him in the campaign and he, and he is a Ranger. So I think he's going to be added probably sooner rather than later as well, just because it's, you know, we're adding maybe like one or two to the squad as opposed to these other, you know, squads that need a full two. Those are my, you know, kind of next, what's happening, what factions are going to be focused on next here in the long term. But let's talk about some ones that aren't in the game at all that I think might be fun and I think they'll maybe add by the end of next year. I think that what they're going to probably do is start moving around in the ages. And so, yes, the dwarves, you could add a lot to the dwarves. Um, I think they're going to focus on Thorin's company first. But then what about, you know, stuff from the first age? What about Durin? Um, specifically, I think that's a big one, but that will come later on. And I think they were going to probably add the new Minorians. I'm not exactly sure, of course, but I think, if anything, we will see at least Durin-focused dwarves and the new Minorians by Q3 next year. That's my, that's my prediction there. So, we messed it up a little bit. I can't move this line, unfortunately, but these are my big predictions for the next year. Uh, again, let me know down in the comments if you think something is totally out of whack or if there's something that you think is going to be added within the next year. I'd love to hear it and talk about it. I kind of like doing these speculation videos. They're a lot more fun uh, at the moment, you know, kind of when we're dwelling and thinking about things. Um, but thanks for watching.